All right, I want to talk to you real quick here about Martin Richling's uh, delusional, paranoid beliefs that he is uh, speaking ex cathedra, you know, that he is perfect and infallible. He doesn't come right out and say it, but he very strongly implies it. I'm going to show you some of this. Now, I said in my video, my, my one video rebuking him, I said that I'm not perfect. Now, if you followed the ministry, you know that. <laughs> I mess up sometimes. I, I make mistakes. I've corrected myself. I've had to correct myself. That's just what any preacher is going to do. Real preacher. Okay? But now, if you understand Catholicism, you understand they believe in the infallibility of the church. And they believe that their priests are other Christs. And that the Pope is the vicar of Christ. He is Jesus Christ manifest on the earth. They call him the Holy Father, which is God's title. So you see in Catholicism, which Richling, you know, said that he wanted to be a Jesuit priest when he grew up, you know, when he was a boy, and I think he made it, but uh, in Catholicism they teach the infallibility of, a, of the Pope when he's speaking ex cathedra. Okay? And they teach that the priest is another Christ. So let's watch a couple video clips here of Martin Richling, and I'm going to show you that he is a papist. Watch this. When a preacher is preaching the word, I am not the shepherd of the sheep in terms of on the same level as Jesus Christ. He's not on the... Now this shows you, for anyone interested, mostly our church and other faithful believers will get this. He's going to say... He's not the good shepherd like Christ. He's under Christ. The issue today is Christ living through our flesh. Only real believers understand that that is God's eternal purpose in Ephesians 3. As Jesus Christ, as we're conformed to the image of God's Son, as God's Son lives his literal life through our flesh, that's who lived through Paul. Hmm. So, Christ lives his literal life through our flesh? Really? Oh, well, we're going to see about that as we continue. But let me just show you something here from the Catholic Catechism. It says here, Christ, our high priest in heaven, the priest on earth, another Christ. Now, if Christ is living his literal life through your flesh, then that would mean you're another Christ, wouldn't it? Not just a Christian but another Christ. Then you would have to be sinlessly perfect in your flesh. Do you get it? Let's watch another clip here from Martin Satanist Richling. This isn't looking at what Christ did and being like Jesus, like Brian's going to now describe unto you. All right, Jesus Christ is perfect, I'm not. I'll make mistakes sometimes. Wait a minute. Jesus Christ is perfect. Brian Denlinger says, I'm not. Well, that's true. But the issue, if Brian Denlinger was saved, is not Brian Denlinger living. The issue is Christ living through flesh. Do you want me to show you these passages? Or I, because I probably should, because most of you Denlinger people don't even know they exist. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 10. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. The life also of Jesus, that's real life. Manifest where? In our body. Verse 11, For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest where? In our mortal flesh. Now, is the life of Jesus going to be made manifest through your life as a Christian? Yeah, it will. But not through you teaching perfect doctrine and through you having a perfectly sanctified body of flesh like Jesus Christ had. That isn't true. What's going on there is the Lord Jesus Christ is saying, Hey, you know what? They hated me. They're going to hate you. Um, I was persecuted. You're going to be persecuted. I mean, look, look at the passage there. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Have you experienced that as a Christian? You say, yes, I have, actually. I've, I've been quite perplexed at people, their reactions to me trying to witness to them. You know, I've been troubled 
on every side. I've had times when, when things have been really bad because of my stance as a Christian, you know, um, but not in despair, you know, you know, that it's supposed to be this way. All these different things. What Jesus Christ went through on this earth, you're going to go through as a Christian. That's what's being said there. Not that you are going to somehow preach perfect doctrine and never be in error. And I'm going to show you as we continue here, he really lets something slip that proves that he's a papist. Let's keep watching. This is seeing the real, literal Jesus Christ manifested through flesh. That's why the Apostle Paul says, for to me to live is Christ. Paul says, I'm living, you're seeing Christ. That's why he told the Ephesians, who had never seen Jesus Christ at all in his earthly ministry, he says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21, if so be that ye have heard him, he tells the saints at Ephesus, ye heard Christ and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. When did the saints at Ephesus ever hear Christ, these Gentiles at Ephesus? When were they ever taught by Christ? Not during his earthly ministry, but by Christ in Paul, living through Paul's flesh. Whoo! Did you catch that? We can't hear from Jesus Christ, heaven coming down, teaching us through the Word. Oh, no, 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 no. No, we have to have a priest class above us. They heard Christ and were taught by Christ through Paul. Holy Father Paul, you know. That's what this nut is teaching. That's exactly what he's trying to say here. He is trying to teach Roman Catholic doctrine that you need the holy ordained priesthood that teaches that does not teach error as long as we speak ex cathedra. That's what this guy's teaching. He is a papist. Totally a papist. And by the way, you say, but Paul had Christ speaking through his flesh. Really? Let's look at Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Find my place here. Romans chapter 7, verse 17. Paul writing, Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that with now if I do that, I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Um, I thought Christ was dwelling in his flesh and that he was Christ walking around on the earth. Well, then why would he say, in my flesh there dwelleth no good thing if he is Christ's physical representative on the earth in terms of being perfect and pure in his doctrine and never being wrong? How could you make a statement like that? Unless you're a papist, you see. You see, the truth is, dear friend, you have access, direct access, to the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven, and He can teach you His Word through the power of the Holy Ghost, through the Scriptures. That's why you'll never see me pointing to myself and saying, I am Christ to you, and you must obey and listen to everything that I say, because I am perfect in doctrine. I would never utter such blasphemous words in seriousness. Okay, I said it there just as a joke. But the fact is, I wouldn't say that thing like that. Good night, man. You know what's perfect? The book. The book. The book. The book. This is where you go to. That's why I've had, I've had brothers, I've had sisters, I've had women, saved women, that have said, Hey, Brother Brian, I don't mean to usurp, usurp your authority or whatever, but you said such and such, and doesn't the Bible say this? And I've gone, oh, man, I can't believe I messed up. I can be corrected by the body of Christ through the Word. The perfect standard is here. It's not here. And it never will be here. And some of you that put ministries and preachers up on a pedestal and think that they're perfect, and all of a sudden, it won't take long and you'll realize they're not perfect. And then your little idol will fall down and you'll go, oh no, what do I do now? 
Uh, probably should stick with the book, you know. Let's continue. He doesn't preach 100% pure, perfect doctrine. Really. You are to be uncorruptible when it comes to doctrine. No corruptness. You are to be perfect, Paul said. Blameless. Okay, you are to manifest forth the life of Jesus Christ. And if Christ was living through your flesh, Brian, he would be teaching doctrine perfectly. You're to be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, Paul told the Philippians. So if Christ was living in me, I would preach perfectly. Okay, I know you're watching this there, Marty. Let me ask you a question, and I want you to write it in the comments for everybody to see. Don't be a little coward and go make a little video of 45 minutes of playing two seconds of Brian Denninger and then pausing it and going hee 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 and making your stupid little comments. Put it down in the comments section where you can't block other people from rebuking you, you know. Put it down there for the whole world to see. Do you teach perfect doctrine? Do you, Martin Richling, teach 100% Pure, perfect doctrine. Write it in the comments, please. You say, well, let's, let's have a debate. No, 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 we don't, we don't need to do that, okay? Write it in the comments. I want it in writing so the whole world can see it. He can make mistakes, and that's what flesh does. But Christ doesn't make mistakes, and Christ lives again through flesh like he lived through Paul. You just got to follow Paul. And follow the establishment commandment, which you don't, which you mock later on. Keep going. Ooh, did you see a little thing there to himself? You just gotta follow Paul and the establishment commandment that I've never heard anybody else preach except for old Marty here. You would be perfect if you followed the establishment commandment. Again, I ask, Martin Richling, are you perfect in your doctrinal stands? Because I've already proved that you aren't because you teach that Jesus Christ was a created being and, and that's not true from Scripture. i proved it over and over and over again. Please comment. Okay? This watching over the flock that the Lord, it isn't the Lord God Almighty or the Lord Jesus Christ who has given you anything, Brian. These are deceived, blind dolts who you simply, we're going to see, are feeding, and are feeding trash unto. So all of you that uh, have seen my videos and have watched my videos, that's all just trash that I've fed unto you. I guess this book is trash then because I read from it a lot in my teaching and preaching. But uh, he called you deceived dolts, okay? That's why he's afraid to allow comments on his videos from you deceived dolts. See, again, the cult mentality here. He thinks that all of you worship me. You're all Demlingerites or something like that. No, you're not. You people all have your own mind. Like I said, some of you disagree with me vehemently on a couple of issues, and yet we can still stay in fellowship. We can still respect one another. And I do respect a lot of you, even some of those of you that go to the church building thing, and we've had disagreements on that and stuff. Hey, there are some of you I respect very highly. I'll be very honest with you. I don't agree with you 100%, but I do respect many of you. Okay? But you see, little hireling here, little uh, richling, he's saying, you're all deceived dolts. All right. Then put your comments, your brave little comments, down in the comment section, and the deceived dolts are going to write to you. You aren't afraid, are you? What did he tell Peter after he was, you know, ascended up from, you know, raised from the dead? He said, feed my sheep. That's my job. I'm he just compared himself to Peter. He said, feed my sheep. Well, it had been a better, you should have followed Paul. Okay. Peter then was filled with the Holy Ghost in Acts 2. Peter wasn't preaching errors and mistakes. Ho, ho, ho! Uh-oh! Peter wasn't preaching errors and mistakes. Because he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh-oh! 
You know one of the ways that you can scare an animal out of the bush is to whack the bush and it runs out? You know one of the ways that you can get a Catholic to run out of their cover, to run out of the bush, so to speak? Start whacking their little pet doc doctrines, little things that are sacred to a Catholic. Who's the first pope according to Catholicism? The Apostle Peter. <laughs> He's the one that the church was founded upon, the rock that the church was founded upon. Yeah, Jesus Christ is the rock. Okay, that the church is founded upon. Other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is the rock, not Peter. But you see, Catholics will get all upset when you kick Mary, when you kick Peter. And I don't mean kicking them saying that they're lost or anything. No, I don't mean that. But what I'm saying is when you bring them down to the level of the average Christian, oh boy, and you saw Richling just get upset there. He compares himself to Peter. You should compare yourself to Paul, which I do. You've seen that in other studies, if you know anything about the ministry. But he gets all upset because I compare myself to Peter. And then he says, Peter doesn't teach error. He never made mistakes or taught error. Which is Catholic doctrine, by the way. Galatians chapter 2, verse 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face, because he was to be blamed... For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles, but when they were come, he withdrew himself, or withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. Okay, then you say, that was just in practice. Peter just did that in practice. He, that wasn't doctrine that he was teaching. Let's continue. Verse 14, But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Was Peter in error? Was he teaching error? Yes, Peter was in error. He was not the infallible Pope of the Catholics. Okay? The first Pope there, the Peter, is a figment of Catholic imagination. He doesn't exist in Scripture. The real Peter in Scripture made mistakes, just like anybody makes mistakes, including the Apostle Paul. Yes, we are to have Christ's life living through us. Yes, we are supposed to be Christ's representatives on earth. But if you haven't realized by now that Christians make mistakes and struggle with their flesh... You are either very, very green, a very extreme novice Christian that hasn't been around very much, or you're not saved, okay? Christians make mistakes. We're not perfect. Unless you're a richling, you know, then in your little mind you think that you're a perfect Jesuit priest. <laughs> Excuse me, I meant Catholic. Uh, oh, Christian. Sorry. Everyone in our church just reads the Bible. We're all like-minded. They all see the same thing that is that I see, that it's right there being taught, simple as can be, because they read the scriptures. <laughs> oh, boy, yeah. Everybody in my church believes the way I do. Yes, that's the definition of a cult. You say, well, all Christians are supposed to agree. We're supposed to be 100% agreement. Really? Acts chapter 15, verse 37. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought, thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren under the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, confirming the churches. Wait a second. They were supposed to be in 100% agreement. There was not supposed to be any disagreements between them. But there was. 
And yet both men were still filled with the Holy Ghost. Huh? Really? Sure. And it wasn't just a matter of personality. Paul had reasons for not wanting to have Mark come with him. This, this cultic mindset, and, and I mean, this Martin Richling guy is, is one of the most cultish uh, people I've ever seen, okay? I mean, he believes that he has got the answers, he is perfect, with infallible in his doctrine, and, you know, apparently nobody else is. And so I, I just want to end here, because I'm going to get into some other videos here with showing Martin Richling's hypocrisy. But uh, let me just ask a couple questions. And again, there, Martin, I know you're watching. Put your comments down here in the comments section, okay? For my deceived dolts, you know, the people that watch this ministry, I'd like them to be able to refute you, okay? Since they're all deceived, it shouldn't be too hard for you. But let me ask you a couple questions. Number one, are your doctrinal stands, all your doctrin doctrinal preaching, is it perfect? Is it 100% pure and perfect? That's the first question. Okay. Secondly, let me ask you this. Do you believe that Peter never spoke doctrinal error? Okay. How about that one? Okay, thirdly, I forgot what it was there. I had to go back and watch the video again, and I remembered got a lot of other things on my mind right now. Thirdly, let me ask you a question. There, Martin Richling. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and 2 says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. We're not supposed to learn from just one person. So let me ask you a question there, Martin Richling. Could you give us uh, some other ministries that are good and that preach the way that you preach? I mean, because, you know, if it's just you, you're the only one who's a real, legitimate, perfect preacher on the earth, um, you know, that would be kind of a cultic, you know? So uh, I'd like you to answer those three questions, okay? Please give us another ministry that preaches the way that you preach that we could rely on for perfect doctrine, if that is what you believe. Put the comments down there, I want to see them.